Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has described the killing of Jamal Khashoggi as a heinous crime and denies all knowledge and involvement. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the administration has identified at least some of the individuals responsible. To discuss this further, we are joined by Professor of International Law, Marjorie Cohn. Thanks for joining us, Marjorie. My pleasure, thanks. So in light of the evidence that Saudi Arabia or Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman orchestrated the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, do you expect President Trump to give in to the current pressure and reconsider his current economic relationship with Saudi Arabia? No, not at, not at all. We have billions of dollars in arms deals, but also the United States, John Bolton and others in the administration are gunning for regime change against Iran. And Israel and Saudi Arabia are the U.S. partners in that prospective regime change. And the Trump administration does not want to lose um, the benefit of having Saudi Arabia in that so-called coalition and want to keep the oil flowing. Um, also, uh, Trump pulled out of the uh, Iran deal, and that means sanctions against Iran are going into place. Yesterday, the Treasury Department put new sanctions, levied new sanctions against nine individual Taliban members who were and their so-called Iranian supporters. So I think that they are laying the groundwork for some kind of intervention in Iran. It's not clear whether it's going to be armed intervention. And this is this uh, murder and torture and dismemberment of Khashoggi um, is a, a certainly going to hurt that, but I think it will not be fatal. Well, can you say that what has happened with Khashoggi has basically put the spotlight on Saudi Arabia and American relations, as well as all the other little intricate roles that most people didn't were not aware of until this happened? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, for example, there has been so much publicity about this murder and torture and horrible uh, extrajudicial killing of Khashoggi um, that that led Tom Friedman, for example, of the New York Times to say that the killing of Khashoggi was morally worse than the war in Yemen, which is an astounding claim since tens of thousands of um, of, of uh, Yemenis have been killed. It, according to the UN, it's the worst humanitarian crisis uh, in the world. But this is not unusual because in 2009, um, Vicki Duvall, who is a former CIA lawyer, told Jane Mayer of The New Yorker that people are a lot more comfortable with a drone strike that kills many than with a beheading that, or throat slitting that kills one. And one of the problems is that we don't, because of the media, we don't see the images of the children killed with U.S. bombs in Saudi Arabia. We don't hear the stories of the survivors. It's not 24-7 on the news the way a hurricane or Khashoggi or the, this latest, uh, these latest uh, mail bombs um, are. And so I think that it's really incumbent upon the media to show people what's happening. It was during the Vietnam War when television captured what U.S. bombs were doing to the Vietnamese people um, and the anti-war movement and other developments that turned people against the war, and that's what we should be seeing on the television. Well, thank you, Marjorie, for joining us. And your writings on Yemen uh, obviously are continued to be a collection and had the light shine on to it because of the Hishogi killings. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.